You know one of the most satisfying things in the world? Having a nice glass of cold beer on a beautiful day like today. Prost! Mm. Coffee and... I'm gonna get drunk just looking at all these beers. <laughs> There's no doubt that there's a big beer culture here in Europe. Almost every nation claims to be the biggest beer drinkers and the best beer producers. So naturally, I've always been curious about, you know, what makes beer, beer? What are the differences between, you know, drinking commercial beer? Like here in the Netherlands, Heineken is undoubtedly the biggest, most popular Dutch beer brand. They even have a museum dedicated to it. The problem is we usually stick to one brand, one that is familiar to us, cheaper, more accessible, in short, commercial beer. So just for context, I came from the Philippines and even there we have just one brand. And now that I'm in the Netherlands, we have Heineken. I don't hate Heineken, I have nothing against Heineken. I drink Heineken, but the funny thing is most locals here would much rather have anything but Heineken. So I ventured out into kind of understanding the whole craft brewery scene here in the Netherlands. It's not as big as some other countries like the UK, the US, maybe in, in Belgium and Germany, but in the Netherlands alone there are about almost a thousand craft breweries. Fun fact, the, 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 the highest concentration of craft breweries is in Brabant region and I think the whole craft brewery scene is gonna just con gonna continue to grow even then there's a lot that I don't know about beer I mean like what's in this glass how does it get its color what's the difference of IPA and lager how do you make alcohol and less alcohol content to understand craft beer culture and have a much better appreciation I decided to visit two craft breweries here in Amsterdam. First brewery visit is here in the Seven Duchten. Super cool. I mean, look at this backdrop. And we are still in Amsterdam. I mean, it's obviously a little bit outside of the center, so I love it because it's a little bit of a hidden gem. It is off the beaten path. I've heard a bit of these beers and I've actually tried them myself ages ago in like one of the pubs and one of the bars so I'm really looking forward to visiting this brewery learning more about its story and I'm going to be interviewing the owner himself let's go my name is uh, Harm Taakma uh, I'm the founder uh, and brewer of uh, brewery De Zeven Deugden, which means the seven virtues. I will take you on a tour. Malt. Malt is like grain, but it has sprouted, prepared itself for uh, the new plant. But misuse that, those enzymes, because we don't, we're not interested in the new plant. We are interested in those enzymes because they're also able to transform starch into sugar. Mm. And we want to make sugar water in order to make beer. Yeah. And we pour 20 or 30 of those bags into this mill. And oh. the mill grinds the malt very coarsely, which means that the starch inside can dissolve in the water. These are our fermentation tanks. Learning about the process of making this delicious golden beverage was quite intimidating at first. I mean, hearing things like fermentation process, utilizing yeast, and the delicate way of setting temperature just to produce the right kind of beer. It was a lot to take into, but it was awesome to get a sneak peek of the daily grind that happens inside a microbrewery, and exactly how they are packaged and shipped for the world to taste. Okay, this is a really, really interesting brewery, guys, and I really enjoy the tour. Actually, one of their best-selling beers, 7.5%. Wow. This is my all-time favorite. It's a uh, stout. Okay. <laughs> and this one has coffee, right? Coffee, yes. Coffee really and also tons of uh, chocolate. 
Okay, coffee yeah. and chocolate. Wow. Okay, two of my favorite things. I like it. I think it has an aftertaste of the coffee. The first, the first taste, the first sip, not so much, and then you re you taste it in your mouth almost. <laughs> this is one of the most interesting beers I've tried. Whew. Okay, now time for wheat beer. Mm, just how I like it. <laughs> The next brewery I visited has a pretty funky concept, Valhalla, or the Beer of the Gods. I love the casual hipster vibe of this place. It has a tap room of all their best and unique tasting beers, plus an outdoor space to enjoy a drink, or many. Before starting our tour, we're gonna have a glass of beer. <coughs> Giving us the tour for today is Mick, Valhalla's brewer who, just like its brand, also has an interesting character to match. Uh, Art, my boss, he had a dream <laughs> that he uh, had to brew the favorite beers of the gods. So all the beers we brew are named after gods like Loki, Zeus, Apollo, Osiris. Our mission is to brew the favorite beer of the gods so as we, that we are immortals on earth also can drink these beautiful liquid creations of beauty. Even though this was my second brewery tour, I noticed they had their own unique way of crafting their beers. But the magic of the brewing process was pretty much the same. Like first you have water, like the most, then you have malts, then you have hops, and then you have yeast. The hops, these are the hops. <laughs> yeah, just oh. the best one. Now it's yours. <laughs> yeah. It looks like dog food. My personal favorite was Loki. Low in alcohol, fresh and golden, with a slightly bitter taste. Yum. Wow. Very nice. People that don't like IPAs, like, no, I don't like IPA, and I like IPA. Just take a sip of Loki. Oh, but I actually like this. What is the difference between IPA, Pilsner, you know, like... Pilsner, well, you have two types of beers. You have, um, sorry, a high fermentation and a lower fermentation. You have, yeah, lagers and ales. Those are the, the, the different types. And an ale, that's an IPA, for example, it's really fruity and it smells a lot because the, the yeast molecules are bigger than the other one. And there's CO2 in the beer, so they seriously just flow up by the, by the CO2. And a lager, uh, they don't have their, that really strong, yeah, hoppy, hoppy uh, smell. It's because the yeast molecules are smaller, so it stays underneath in your glass. There's a lot of math involved in it here. Is, yeah. A lot of calculating. It's a lot yeah. of calculating. <laughs> you know, drinking beer is not just about getting drunk, how popular the brand is. The purpose of these craft breweries and what makes it so fun to try them out you, you just know that they deeply care about how they brew their beers, the quality of their beers. They're more innovative, adventurous, and most especially, they all have their own special story to tell. The Save in Duchten, for example, is actually a social enterprise. Uh, I hired a guy with autism. They have an open employment policy and known to hire people with disabilities. And there are also a lot of other breweries here in the Netherlands and, and especially here in Amsterdam. But there are way too many of them to cover in this vlog. Maybe in the future, so make sure to subscribe to the Traveling Foxes if you haven't yet. It would also help very much our channel to grow. I've got another glass of beer here. Most especially guys, drink in moderation, have fun, and I hope to see you guys again soon in the next vlog. Prost! <laughs> What's the weirdest experiment or beer combination? Uh, start with uh, licorice. Oh gosh! <laughs> I'm not a fan of licorice, so yeah, that would be... <laughs> uh, it was especially for, for Dutch.